ASMR. Tonight, we're going to be researching whether the West is actually more stacked than the East in today's current NBA. Uh, with this most recent free agency period, we've had a lot of stars move from their teams from last year, and I've been seeing these images circulating on Instagram and Twitter and things like that of people saying, wow, the West is so stacked compared to the East. And while usually for playoff pushes and things like that, it is true that the West is much harder and more like a bloodbath than the East. Uh, I don't know if these images are 100% accurate, and so we're going to put that to the test. Uh, so what I've done is I've taken each and every team's best players, uh, I've handpicked my representatives for each team, and put them into a player pool. So one by one, starting with the East, we're going to go through each team's players and kind of just pin them into what kind of category do they fall under. I've got a seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got an eight tiered tier list to categorize all of these players. So we're gonna have all-star caliber players, fringe all-stars, all-star potential. Unlikely to happen again, meaning they made an all-star in their past, but I don't think it's really up for grabs again in their future, then maybe one day these are younger players that at some point all-stars were maybe mentioned with them in mind, but it's hard to gauge if they really have that potential anymore. Then we've got solid role players. They're players that they're good, but I don't think that they're ever going to make an all-star game. Past Prime, these are former all-stars that are just being analyzed because you know, they have one to their name in the past, and then too early to tell is our final category. These are young guys that have had a very nice young showing, but there's just not enough information. There's, it's too early to tell. So with that, I think the stage has been set. Let us go through both conferences, and then at the very end, we will decide if the West is actually unfair compared to the East. So starting off with the Eastern Conference, I have pulled the 44 players um, that I think are worth analyzing. So first up, we're going to go in alphabetical order, and that means we are starting with the Atlanta Hawks. So from the Atlanta Hawks, I have only selected one person off of next year's roster, and that would be Mr. Trey Young. Now, I think this is an easy bin of our eight categories. Trey Young is an all-star caliber player. I do not really care if he has made the all-star in these last two years or if he has barely made it. If you just look at his impact and what he has done, this guy is in his talent. He is an all-star caliber player. He averages, I think he had the scoring title in two years ago. He was averaging a lot of points per game. He's one of the league leaders in assists per game. He led his team to the Eastern Conference Finals in one of the years. And yeah, on defense, he is a bit of a cone. He is not the most athletically gifted, or he's not going to lock anyone up on defense. That is true. And his team is not doing well right now, and I think that plays a big part into why he isn't getting these All-Star nominations. But just from his points and his assists and the type of point guard that he is, I think he is a sure shot All-Star caliber whether or not he has been making it. So that is one. Then after the Atlanta Hawks, we go into the next team, which is the Boston Celtics. And from the Celtics, I have collected basically their entire starting roster, plus Al Horford. Um, I'm going to go through this one by one. So starting off with the face of the franchise, Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum is an obvious all-star caliber player. He just signed the largest contract in NBA history. They just won their first championship with this core, uh, and he is the guy. Uh, as much as like there is some talk between him and Jalen Brown, and Jalen Brown winning Eastern Conference Finals uh, MVP, and then Finals MVP, Jason Tatum, I do think, is still the, the face of the franchise and the guy. It is a dynamic duo, but he is more so that pride and joy of the Celtics. Then after him, we do have 
Jalen Brown and Jalen Brown in his own regard amazing guy he is the best number two in the league I hope that we never have to see them apart I don't really want to know if Jalen Brown can carry a team on his own and honestly I don't want to know if Jason Tatum can do it on his own I think these two guys getting drafted in back-to-back -back years was fantastic for the Celtics and they are both panning out very very well two of the largest contracts in history Jalen Brown just had a career year in this postseason run and uh even though he's not on Team USA, I hope that he, I, I do think that he is a sure shot all-star caliber player. Now after that, we move into Kristaps Porzingis. And I think that Porzingis is an interesting case. Uh, he has made the all-star in his past. Then he, he does have some like injury history that we have to deal with. And it's really just between two categories for me. He has either a fringe all-star or it is unlikely to happen again and I think the key thing here is how if we look at how he played last year for the Celtics uh, he was very very successful uh, just the way that he was able to elevate them to that next level uh, especially in that one game where he showed out I think it was game one of the finals you saw it all on display he is a seven footer that can shoot it from anywhere on the court he has basically curry range um not consistency but if you look at where he pulls it it's almost logo level and the biggest thing is just health and i think based on how old he is and what just happened in the playoffs and his recent surgery i'm going to have to put him in unlikely to happen again i don't think talent wise it is impossible it is just, he made it in the past, and I think that health is going to be too much of a concern for him to really make that all-star push, uh, because really, with him recovering this next year, I doubt it happens, and that means two years from now, can we project that Kristaps Sporzingis will be an all-star caliber player, and that is just too hard to tell. Next up, we've got Drew Holiday. Uh, Drew Holiday has made the All-Star game in the past. He is a phenomenal player. He's on Team USA. Great lockdown. Uh, do a guy. But I don't think that he's getting any All-Star bids. Uh, his best days, I think he's still playing very good basketball. But just in terms of scoring, uh, a lot of people really value scoring for the All-Star team. And that's just not his role here. He steps up when he's needed to. He does. He plays phenomenal defense. Uh, but I don't think that he is going to. So I'm going to put him in the solid role player category. Um, and yeah, moving into the next guy, I think the same is true for Derek White. He is a fantastic role player. Deserves his contracts. He really helped boost this team. Uh, played great in the last two years. Uh, especially this past year with his bald head. But outside of being like a fan favorite, I don't think that Derek White is actually making the All-Star game. Uh, it would be extremely surprising to me if after last year's push, he was actually able to make it this year. I think that part of that, some of those Derek White stands, they were not actually Celtics fans. They were just a fan of his game. I think that he's going to have more haters heading into this next year just because the Celtics won. So... Even though a lot of people do respect Derek White in his game and his hustle and his effort, I don't think that it is in the cards for him to crack an all-star game. And then after that, we just have Al Horford, and I just included him because uh, he has made many in his past, uh, but this is a sure shot example of someone who has passed their barn. He is still very good, um, but he is more of like a bench player and he is not going to make another one. He's nearing on retirement very soon. And yeah, uh, just in my player pool for people I was analyzing, I was thinking of the best people on each team and I was also including like recent all rookies uh, and anyone who has made the All-Star game in their past. That was my criteria for picking out these people. Um, and so yeah, after the Celtics, we move into the Brooklyn uh, and from the Brooklyn Nets, I just have three players selected. This is Cam Thomas, Nick Claxton, and Ben Simmons. So starting off with Cam Thomas, it is, you know, he is a very adequate scorer. Uh, I, he doesn't get the starting role that he probably deserves. Whenever he's been in the starting role, he can drop 30 very 
easily, very, very easily. We've seen him go out for 40 and like four games in a row. Uh, and when he's given those minutes, he can be great. But the rest of his game is a little bit lackluster. He needs to swing the rock more. He is suffering a little bit from the Michael Porter Jr. disease. So if he is able to, like his bag is great, his scoring ability is phenomenal, but he does need to up it a little bit more in the passing category. So I like the potential. He is still young. I'm going to put him in the maybe one day category. I don't think he is a definite all-star. I don't know for sure that he has all-star potential. He might bottom out as like a Jordan Clarkson score type of dude where he's able to score very well and he's serving teams off the bench. But maybe he's never going to be that like starting rotational piece that gives you 30 each day like it looks like he could be. Uh, it's just a little too iffy. Let's see with this next coach. Uh, Mikael Bridges off the team. The young core is being a little more young. They're not going to try and run the offense through Ben Simmons or play their cards through him. So maybe, maybe this becomes more of like an all-star potential kind of guy. Next up, we have Nick Claxton. Uh, very solid young center. Uh, very great on the in the block department, but I would just put him in solid role player. I don't think that Nick Claxton, as like nice as he is of a young center, uh, I, I believe he's seven feet, he gets his boards, he gets his off, I think he gets his offensive rebounds, um, and gets those blocks for sure. I don't, I don't see it happening. Um, I think that he does stay as a solid role player. And then finally, we've got Ben Simmons, and Ben Simmons, I'm gonna say he's past his prime. Uh, you know, he had that amazing rookie year. Everyone thought that, like, wow, if this is him as a rookie, what happens in the next three years? And he basically just put up the exact same stats, if not worse. Then uh, you had that Philadelphia breakdown in the playoffs against the Hawks, where he just passed up an open layup, and, you know, it was too much of a liability on offense. Even though he's a good assister, he can rebound. He's like just too afraid to shoot the ball. He never developed that shooting like he was supposed to. You get the offseason clips, and then he just didn't. And ever since then, he has just been injured. So I don't see Ben Simmons making another one in his future, uh, regardless of how many off-season videos we get from him, I think that his best days are behind him, and he's just collecting a bag and eventually going to retire. Next up, we've got the Charlotte Hornets out of the East, and so from Charlotte, there are three main guys I've got selected here. Uh, Lamella Ball, Miles Bridges, and Brandon Miller. So starting off with Lamella Ball, uh, I'm gonna put him in as a fringe all-star Lamelo has made the All Star in his career. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that he made it at least one of the years. And honestly, when he's on the floor, he is an All Star caliber player. Um, last year, before he got injured, he was flashing greatness. His rookie year, you know, ESPN was going all gaga over him. He is definitely a stud when he is healthy, and I think that is the biggest thing. He just has not been available enough for us to say that he is a consistent all-star type of dude um, and health is something that matters a lot if you're not available then your team cannot succeed and you can't really make the all-star game if you're not going to be healthy come all-star uh, weekend so I think the talent is there I think that he can do he can like be efficient enough and it has the the game to be an all-star player it is just about if he is going to be healthy. Then we've got Miles Bridges, uh, and Miles Bridges he is a solid role player. Uh, I think that he is one of the best players on the Nets. Sorry, not the Nets, the Sh Charlotte Hornets. Um, or Nets. And, um, you know, his recent contract was well deserved, but he is not going to make an all-star game. He is just a guy that is good at basketball, and uh, I think that when he's playing with Lamelo, he does get elevated. He is a very solid dude, but unless like 
Lamelo can stay healthy for an entire season, and he can be like DeAndre Jordan. Like, imagine if Chris Paul and DeAndre Jordan both made it. I think that Lamelo, if he was healthy for a whole year and just feeding Miles Bridges the entire year, Miles Bridges could, if he is able to capitalize on all the assists and all the lobs and all that, he could have like a run like that. But barring that very unlikely scenario, I think that he just is a solid role player. And then finally, we have Brandon Miller, uh, who had a very solid rookie campaign, like definitely second best rookie in his class. The only thing is like, with Wemby, you can tell, Wemby, um, I don't have any rookies in this list, by the way, just because one day their, their cutouts weren't available, and uh, it's just unfeasible for rookies to make it as an all-star. There's no one in this class that's really that impressive, and if Luka and Wemby could not make the all-star game as rookies, then what chance does anyone have in this draft class or even future draft class? Um, maybe like Cooper Flag could prove me wrong, but yeah, right now the bar is just too high. Uh, and so with Brandon Miller, he had a very nice rookie campaign. I think that he has the skills to develop, but I'm just going to put him in the too early to tell. I like Wemby. Wemby honestly should have been one last year, could have been one next year, uh, last year. I think next year it's definite. It's definitely happening in his future. Brandon Miller, we have to see how he progresses in this next year. I think he's at a very good starting point, and if he is able to make the right jump, then I would put him in the all-star potential. I just need to see one more year from him, uh, really speaking. Next up, we've got the Chicago Bulls, uh, and from the Chicago Bulls, I've got three players. First up is Zach Levine. Then we've got Kobe White, and then Nikola Vucevic. Okay, and so, with Zach Levine, we have a guy that has made the All-Star twice in his past. He got that giant contract where he's making like 50 million a year, and we just haven't seen anything that great from him in the last two years. Uh, obviously, this past year, it looked like he wanted to get traded. I don't know if he was actually injured. It just seems like they've been trying to get someone to take him and no one is willing so he's just sitting out games so this is really dependent on two things his attitude and his health but when those two things are clicking fringe holster i think if he is available and playing maybe it's for a bad team maybe it's not on a contender but he can put up all-star numbers and he has made the all-star team i don't think that he is washed to the level that he can never make it again. I think in the right situation, if he's getting the ball enough, he could make another all-star team. Uh, and it just, we'll have to see where or if it happens. But Zach Levine is a talented dude. Um, he can ball out. Next up, we've got Kobe White. Uh, and Kobe White, arguably most improved player last year. Uh, I know that it went to Tyrese Maxey but I'm not truly a fan of giving most improved to people that were already, like, said to be good. Like, when John Morant won most improved, or when Tyrese Maxey won it, you're going from someone who is, like, obviously they're going to make that jump, and, like, James Harden left the team, Tyrese Maxey just learned from him, and he's filling the hole. He made that jump, but, like, Kobe White's development was much more unexpected and much more impressive. Like, I feel like Tyrese Maxey, people already had all-star expectations of him, whereas Kobe White, no one was expecting it, and he almost, like, like he was there in the voting, and so I'm going to put Kobe White in the all-star potential. If he can build on his already great improvement this year, I think it's for sure possible that in his future he could see an all-star bid. And then we've got Vooch, and Vooch I know has made it in the past in his, uh, Orlando Magic days. I'm not sure if he ever made it with the Bulls, but I do think that Vooch is getting too old, and it's it's over for him. I don't think that he makes another one. I'm putting him in the best prime category. 
it's just the location, but I want to say when Andre Drummond was inserted into the starting lineup, he did show out, and there was like a, oh wow, Drummond is really killing it in that starting role, so that did make Vooch look a little bit worse, and yeah, I, I think he's past his prime. Next up, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers, and so from the Cleveland Cavaliers, I've selected three players, Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, and Jarrett Allen. Now, Donovan Mitchell, player all-star, you know, one of the best shooting guards in this league, uh, definitely and that top tier with Devin Booker, Anthony Edwards, himself, Jalen Brown, I think that is the cream of the crop. They are all sure shot all-stars. And, uh, yeah, he's the only thing keeping the Cavs relevant at the moment. Next, we go to Darius Garland. And Darius Garland, I'm pretty sure he made it in that one year before Donovan Mitchell joined. And, like, they were having a sneaky good season that year. I don't think it ever happens again, though. I have to put him in that Kristaps Porzingis category. And with him, it's not even really health. It's just... Now you have Donovan Mitchell on your team, and uh, Garland, I think, was shining more amongst trash. Like, he was leading trash to a surprisingly good record, and so he got that bid, and he did play well that year, but I don't think we see that level of, like, points and assists from him again. I think he was, like, a one all-star wonder. And, uh, I... I have to say the same for Jared Allen. Jared Allen in the year that he made the all-star game, he put up some solid stats. I want to say it was, like, 17 and 10, uh, and the biggest reason for it was James Harden got injured and Jared Allen was shooting like 70% from the floor. Um, so for that one year, I think that it was, you know, deserved. We can say it was deserved. I don't think that he shoots 70% from the floor again. I don't think that he is getting any younger. I think that was another one-off type of situation. And, uh, yeah, I really don't expect Jared Allen to see another all-star game in his future. Next up, we move into the Detroit Pistons. Um, yeah, and I know it must be surprising that we have anyone to analyze from here, but we do. I've selected three players. This is Kate Cunningham, Asar Thompson, and Jalen Duran. So first up with Kate Cunningham. Number one overall pick uh, a couple years ago. He really has just been surrounded by trash. His, saw, his rookie year was solid. He definitely was like a solid rookie. And then he's been averaging that 20. I think that if his team has more success and he makes like even a slight jump, I do think that he's able to make the all-star game. It is just about how trash the Pistons are. Like when your team is so, so, so bad, uh, you're not really going to get a nomination. And that's not his fault. Uh, they fired Monty Williams. They have recruited a lot of vets this offseason. So maybe the Pistons are able to win more like 25 to 30 games. And while that is still bad, I think that's enough for you to get like an all-star kind of guy. Um, at least one of your players into the all-star game. So I will book Kate Cunningham as a fringe all-star. I think that he can do it. I think that it's in his future and it really just depends on the team's success. Uh, but his stats are not far off of it. And then looking at Jalen Duran. Duran at the beginning of this year. Like Duran, I think last year, not this past one, but the year before, pretty sure he made all rookie first team uh, alongside Jaden Ivey. And at the start of this year, he was a double-double machine. Then I think there was a little bit of health stuff with him. That's why we heard less. Um, but he looks promising. He looks like a promising young guy. Um, especially in the, like, rebounding category. If him and Cade can stay healthy and develop together, I do think that Durin in his future could see him. I, I would not rule it out. Um, I like what I see in him. I think that he is a promising young, you know, prospect for Detroit. And I would like to believe that one day he could be 
it's hard to say he is still so young but I like what I see and then with Azar Thompson uh, yeah another guy who had at least in the first half of his rookie year a very promising campaign he looked great uh, one of the few guards who was really dominating on the offensive class uh, offensive boards and oh, yeah one of the best like rebounding guards in the game so if he can get back on track I'll be playing at the beginning of that year um, and yeah I think at the very least he'll be a solid role player all-star is very hard to say you know rookie year kind of cut short he didn't even play his entire rookie year uh, but I like what I saw it's just too early to tell so I'm putting him in the too early to tell category with Brandon Miller and then after that we have our Indiana Pacers lineup so from the Pacers I have four people selected this is Tyrese Halliburton Pascal Siakam uh, Miles Turner and Benedict Matherin so first up we Tyrese Halliburton you know career year went to the Eastern Conference Finals made the All-Star Game and now is a representative for Team USA uh, I think that he likely leads the league in assists again um either next year or the following year it honestly just depends on how he is able to recover from that injury he wasn't really the same player after the injury this past year but even then they were able to have a deep playoff push so guy's a baller i think he has a sure shot all-star going forward and uh yeah a truly talented point guard so i'm putting him in the all-star caliber tier and then with pascal siakam since he is being fed by Tyrese Halliburton, and I think that Tyrese Halliburton's future is bright, I would put Siakam right there up there with him. Um, you know, he's made, like, all-star starting teams back in his Toronto days. I think that he's pretty solid still. He's getting older, but paired with a young guard who really specializes in assists more than scoring, the future is bright for Siakam. I think that he still has all-star, at least one all-star bid left in him, for sure. Uh, we'll see, if anything, more than that, but I think that he could make it. Then we have Miles Turner. I think Miles Turner is a big part of this Pacers organization, but I think he has nothing more than just a solid role player. Uh, I included him because, you know, he's, he's usually involved in trade talks and Lakers wanted him for so many years and now you've got the Pacers actually having a solid year and I think that he did have a big role to play in that. They have a lot of young talented, a lot of young guys that just did well, but Miles Turner is one of those veteran guys that he gives you good minutes and yeah, I do think that he is just a role player at best. He's not going to make an all-star game. And then we have Benedict Matherin in his rookie year looked amazing um honestly just very solid as a rookie and off the bench we have to consider this guy wasn't even starting and he was really putting up a lot of 20 point games very solid stats uh, i think that he his stats were slightly down this year i played a little bit more i think and they weren't down a ton in a starting lineup and like his rookie year is too good to overlook and that was all coming off the bench i think he still did play off the bench this past year if i'm not mistaken uh and i like the potential i do think that benedict Matherin is a young talent that i want to believe if he got enough minutes and his game just improved a little more Maybe it's possible. Uh, so I'm gonna put him in the maybe one day category with Cam Thomas. All right, and then with that, we move into our next team, which is the Miami Heat. Uh, and with the Heat, I have five players selected. This would be Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Kevin Love, Tyler Hero, and Jaime Jaquez Jr. So with Jimmy Butler, He's an all-star. Uh, I'm 
not even gonna say fringe. It really, it can depend on his health and if he's taking the game seriously. But if you just look at Jimmy Butler and the impact, they didn't make those finals for no reason. He is that kind of guy. He is a dog. Um, and if he is on your team, he is probably putting up all-star level numbers. Whether he decides to turn it up at the end of the year or not is up to him. But he is an all-star caliber talent. Next up, you've got Bam Adebayo. And yeah, what more can you say about him? He is also an all-star caliber dude. Uh, cards every position, one through five. He is just good. He's just a very nice center uh, in this league. And defensively, one of the most talented or well-skilled players. Um, and I think that he for sure is making the all-star team. He is also representing team, like, he's representing the USA in the Olympics. And uh, that is not for no reason. So, yeah, all-star caliber. Then we've got Kevin Love. Yeah, he's just in here because of his past. He has passed his prime. He's not going to make another one ever again, but I included him because he has made it in the past. Then, we've got Tyler Harrow. Now, Tyler, in his first couple years, was looking mad nice. It looked very good. He got that Sixth Man of the Year award. I don't think it's really in the cards for him. I think that he is, is a good player. Uh, he's definitely starter worthy, even though they're probably gonna start Rozier over him. Um, and yeah, I think that his value maxes out as a solid role player. I think in his first couple years they were unwilling to trade him for Harden, and I I don't think that's a bad thing. He is a solid guy. I don't think that Harden is he's not won anything, so you're not really missing out. But. Arrow, I don't think is going to live to those all-star expectations of his first two years. He has kind of found his role, and he is going to be well appreciated by Miami. I think he has a pretty solid contract, but yeah, a uh, solid role player is where he belongs. And then with JJJ, he had a very nice rookie campaign um, early in the year. I think people are looking at him as the top three talent in this draft class. We'll have to see how that actually shakes out in the next couple years. Uh, but it's just too early to tell. Uh, rookies, it's very hard to tell if in year two they're actually going to make a good jump, and then again in year three. So if you can make consistent jumps in year two and year three, then you're you're in a good place. But off of one year, uh, I don't know. There are flashes of brilliance, but that's all. Next, we move into the Milwaukee Bucks, and from the Milwaukee Bucks, I have four candidates. Giannis Antetokounmpo, Damian Lillard, Chris Middleton, and Brooke Lopez. So, starting off with Giannis, clear all-star, you know, one of the best in the game, top five player. Um, what else is there to say? He's, he's a dominant force, always in that MVP conversation, and yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of Giannis. I think that he is truly one of the best in the NBA. Then we've got Damian Lillard. And now, honestly, Dame should not have been an all-star starter last year. I, I don't know if that's considered a hot take, really. I do not feel like he belonged in that all-star starter um, lineup. Other people were just having a better year than him. He managed to creep into there, and it is kind of funny that he was in the West, and he was not getting any All-Star nominations, and then he gets into the East, and he's immediately an All-Star starter. We have to see how healthy he can be for this next year. We have to see, with his age, he is getting older, what happens to him. I'm gonna put him in the fringe All-Star category. I don't think that it's for sure he makes it. I think it is possible that he declines a little. Um, I guess he did win an All-Star MVP. He was good. He's always pretty good. But I don't trust Dame to be a... I, I think that Trey Young is better than Damian Lillard. <laughs> that, I don't know if that's a hot take or not. 
Dame is not good on defense either, and I think that Trey is a better scorer and a sister uh, shooting. Yeah, maybe give it to Dame. Dame recently, yeah, he joined Giannis, so he's winning, and but he was not winning just like Trey. So Trey is just in a Portland situation. Uh, give me Damian Lillard as a fringe All Star. Next, we have Chris Middleton. And Middleton honestly was such a nice Robin to Giannis' Batman. He was a great number two option until the injuries. Uh, I have to put him in. Unlikely to happen again. I know he has those bids. And if he could return to the player that he was, yeah, he is like a French Rose star type of dude. Um, but I just don't think that he's bouncing back like that. He did have a very nice playoff run, but was like, what, five, six games in the playoffs, and Dame was hurt for it, and Giannis was hurt for it. He's not going to see that much opportunity, so he did the best with what he had. I, I don't think that it's happening again for Middleton, unfortunately. And then Brook Lopez. Yeah, he's made it in his past. Uh, he's just a solid role player. He's not going to make another one. He's not getting any younger. He's very nice um, three-point shooter and blocker is good on defense, but it's, he's not going to make another All-Star game. And now we move into the New York Knicks. Uh, the Knicks have four representatives. We've got Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, um, Mikael Bridges, and OG and Anube. So starting off with Jalen Brunson, clear and obvious All-Star. Uh, one of the best I want to say point guards in the league you know didn't make it two years ago I'm very glad he made it this year I think especially with his playoff run and how he was ending this year he has shown everyone he is truly a all-star caliber guy uh, I, unless he is injured I don't see how he misses it I feel like he he took that big cut they the Knicks are they're going to be good I, I have faith in Jalen Brunson like I I really like this team as a dude, and I think that he is going to not only be good, but keep the Knicks good. After that, we have Julius Randle, and I feel like Julius Randle does get a lot of hate, but when he is on the court and he is playing, he is, he is proven he is like clearly an all-star dude. Um, we have to see how he bounces back from injury, but like even before Brunson, he was making all NBA teams, and his time in New York, though, like, sometimes they love him, sometimes they hate him, you can debate whether he's necessary or not after their run last year, where they were doing most of it without him, I think that he is an all-star talent, I feel like if Brunson is healthy and he is healthy, he is making it again, then we've got Mikael Bridges, and Bridges, though he has nice potential, uh, and early in the Nets stint, he looked like he could be the next KD, like everyone was saying, uh, his play style was very similar, that was his childhood idol, he is just a solid role player, uh, I feel like after this year on the Nets, you can see that, like, yes, he can score 20 points a game, I don't think he's going to turn into a first option, second option type of duty is going to exist as a third option. And I feel the exact same way about OG and Nube. Great defender. Both these guys are great defenders. And can score at least like 15 to 20 uh, in that range. But OG never made it on the Raptors. And now, even though this team is better, I don't think he's going to make it. Um, They're just very good role players. Next, we go into the Orlando Magic, and the Magic have two representatives. This is Paolo Boncaro and Franz Wagner. And Paolo, I think he has proven, even though it's just year two of his career, he is an all-star. He is a certified all-star in this East. Led the Magic to the fifth seed. Um, and, yeah, just an amazing rookie campaign even better sophomore year. It's just not being talked about all that much. Um, dude is truly skilled, and I think that he is going to see more all-star bids for sure in the upcoming years. And then with Franz Wagner, um, he, he just signed that mega contract where he could be making like a lot of money over the next five years to 20, uh, up to 
270 over the next five. And, you know, he did help Germany win that FIFA World Cup. He did have a very solid year. I don't think he is quite at that level, but I think it's in his future. I'm going to put him in all-star potential. I don't think that he is for sure there. He's not at that fringe level. I think with another slight jump or just another really good year and some age, he could definitely make one. I would not be surprised to see him make one in this next five years of his contract. Uh, and then we move into the Philadelphia 76ers. From this team, we have four representatives. Joel Embiid, Paul George, Tyrese Maxey, and Kyle Lowry. Uh, first up, Embiid. Yeah, Embiid's an all-star. You know, MVP candidate, when he is playing, his game is not as respectable as some of the other bigs in this league. He does flop a lot, he does big for foul calls, but he is putting up at least 30 points, and yeah, he's a talented guy. He can score from a variety of locations on the floor. He's an all-star for sure. Paul George, playoff B. He's a fringe all-star, and that is... Also, due to health, uh, when he's on the floor and he's playing well, he is like an all-star dude, but his ability to stay healthy has been kind of dicey. Um, last year, he played a solid amount. He did play like quite a few games. And I think it's just about how consistently he's going to be on the floor. Um, I don't think that there's anything about Paul George's game that is screaming that he's going into a decline. I don't think there's anything really wrong with him except for his health. And I, I can't tell you going into next year how many games he's going to play. And so for that reason, I have to say, fringe. And then we've got Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese Maxey had a great year. Um, I'm just gonna put him all the way up to All-Star if he, if he can maintain what he was doing alongside Paul George. I do think that PG is like, probably a number, number three. I, I think that Maxi, just with his consistency and availability, he is going to retain the two status on this team. And with that, he will be able to make the All-Star game. Paul George and Amit are just gonna take turns on the bench and things like that, being hurt. And yeah, Maxi will, at least collect his points and assists and all that when those guys are out. And yeah, uh, I think that Maxi has proven he is an all-star. And then Kyle Lowry is just in the past Brown category. End of discussion. Next up, we have the Toronto Raptors with two representatives. This is Scotty Barnes and Emmanuel Quickly. So starting off with Scotty Barnes, I feel like he has proven he is an all-star. Um, He is definitely the best player by far on the Raptors. He won that All-Star um, Rookie of the Year. I think he has been an All-Star last year. And, yeah, I, I don't think that Scotty Barnes is going to get worse. I feel like his best days are still ahead of him, and he's already cracked that threshold. He just signed a giant contract, and I, I do think it is like a deserved contract. He, is going to live up to what money is being owed. Um, I liked what I saw from him this year when I saw him playing. They are not in any like form to compete. I don't think that the Raptors are going to be competitive. They are in more of a rebuild. So hopefully he can have his stats shine out a little more. Um, maybe even help them win some games, more games than they're expected to. But I think that Scotty Barnes is like an all-star type of guy. Maybe we could move him in his fringe, but he's definitely, like, he has enough talent to be an all-star. And Emmanuel, quickly. Ah. Uh, nothing about this dude's game has indicated to me that he is going to be one one day. It is appalling that the Raptors gave him as much money as they did. They have a lot more faith in him than I do. I uh, guess he has shifty. Yes, I think that he's a good scorer. Outside of that, it is un 
all-star caliber. Nothing more needs to be said. Top five player for sure. Uh, you know, really was willing this entire Mavs team in the finals at times. Could have been MVP last year. He finished top three in voting these last two years, I think. Maybe he finally gets it next year. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, easy all-star. Then Kyrie. That thing is like Kyrie's game. He scores enough and he plays well enough that he should be an all-star. But I think that the West is just so stacked that he cannot make it. Like he didn't make it last year. And it's not like he was having a bad year at all. I think his stats were like all-star worthy. His play is all-star worthy. It's just rough. But I'm willing to put him in the all-star caliber level. Like we saw his playoff run. We saw how well he played after the all-star game last year. And just all throughout last year. He's playing very well alongside Luka, and he still has that ability to drop 40, and yes, he can have bad games, but he can also have really good games, and I think that he is an all-star level dude still. Then we've got Clay Thompson, and Clay Thompson is past his prime. This guy is not making another all-star game. He made quite a few with the Warriors, and he was good in those years. Uh, solid defensively, amazing three-point shooter, but after the injuries, his defense has just gotten worse and worse, and, uh, yeah, offensively, these last two seasons, he's been starting off real slow, and in the playoffs, it hasn't been the prettiest. I don't think that he touches another all-star. And then with Derek Lively Jr., another guy who had a very, very good rookie campaign, especially when you consider his playoff run, um, the ceiling is high for him. It's just about the opportunity and how he develops. I'm gonna put him in too early to tell for right now, but uh, yeah, I I would like to see Derek Lively Jr. make it in the future. Then we move into the Denver Nuggets. We've got three players from here. Uh, number one, Nikola Jokic, our MVP. Yep, all-star caliber. Nothing more needs to be said. Then Aaron Gordon. Now Aaron Gordon is actually quite interesting. He's made it with the Nuggets, and it was deserved. It's just a question of can he do it again? Will he be one of those one-hit wonder kind of guys? Uh, I think what he brings to the floor is very valuable. The Nuggets need him in order to succeed. Just will they be able to be high enough in the seating? And it with him playing well enough that he actually gets another nomination. I think because of his position, yes. I think that when you look at the, the small forward, power forward position, it's not as competitive as the guards. And uh, even the centers necessarily, I think that he can thrive here. Oh, actually, well, you do have some other guys moving in. It depends. I mean, like, two years ago, you had, what, Wiggins making it. Yeah, I want to say that I could see it again. Aaron's Gordon, Aaron Gordon's game has not fallen off like that. I want to say that he is a fringe all-star. I, I think I could see one more coming out of him. Uh, he's still very athletic. He's still good on the defensive side of the ball. I think it's possible. Ah. Uh, and yeah, then you have Jamal Murray, who like, Jamal Murray is like Kyrie, where these guys are good. Uh, Jamal Murray has more injuries in the past, so that's why he didn't make it for a little bit. This guy is good enough that he definitely could make the All-Star game. It's just too stacked. Uh, honestly, like, it's so weird to put Jamal Murray in the All-Star potential category, but for the very fact that he has never made one, I have to put him there. I can't even put him as a French All-Star because he's just like, it's still like a potential type of thing. Like, yes, he plays well enough to probably make an All-Star game. Um, and he has like a great one-two punch with Jokic, but he just, the guards are, it's not. 
not easy to make it in the West. So I'll put him at all-star potential. Even though he has never made one, I don't think that, like,
he has all-star potential for sure. Eamon Thompson, solid rookie campaign, but it's way too early to tell. Like, he just didn't play enough, or we haven't seen enough from him to know. And Jabari Smith Jr., uh, yeah, I want to say the same thing, you know, uh, I like him, he's a younger guy that could be very good, he made all-rookie first team two years ago, I'm pretty sure, last year, he was solid, uh, but he's looking to be better, I think last year in summer league, he looked great, and it's still too early, I know he is in year two, but it's too early because this Rockets team is very disorganized, or not disorganized, just too young, um, and yeah, with that, we move into the Los Angeles Clippers, we've got three guys from here, uh, first up is Kawhi Leonard, and Kawhi, I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt, because he played so much this year, and because he was, uh, in the All-Star game, I'm gonna give him All-Star caliber, uh, th the only thing that would bring him down to fringe All-Star is health, uh, just like Paul George, you know, All-Star caliber guys, it's just, are they going to be able to do it or not? Uh, I think it was smart of him to pull out of Team USA just for the fact that it is hard, like, he's not even in all of their playoff games, he's barely showed up for the playoffs, uh, for the Clippers, and so, him not playing in the summer increases his chances of playing during the regular season. I think that he can make another All-Star game. And then James Harden. James Harden is giving you solid scoring. He is giving you great assist numbers. He is a French All-Star. Uh, he used to be a sure shot, definite All-Star kind of guy. These last couple years, I think that he's still floating around in that all-star range, but it is right at that cutoff of, like, will he make it, will he not make it, uh, and I think he is, like, truly the definition of a fringe all-star at this point in his career, and Russell Westbrook, unfortunately, fastest prime, very dominant, uh, triple-double machine, he can still go out there and get a triple-double, has really accepted this minor role of the bench, and is taking it all, like, he's had last a hard last couple years, um, but, yeah, there's, there's no way that we see Westbrook in another All-Star game, and then we move into the Los Angeles Lakers, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, um, Austin Reeves, and D'Angelo Russell, now, Anthony Davis, sure shot All-Star, I think that he has put all of his health concerns to rest, uh, all the glass bones, street clothes allegations, he played a lot last year, he was their best, most consistent player, and he showed up for the entire playoffs, um, I am, I am solidly impressed, and yeah, he's, when he's on the court, he is their best player, um, for sure, in all-star caliber, and then we've got LeBron James, as long as LeBron is in the league, really, is an all-star kind of guy, um, didn't really slow down all that much this year. Yeah, he scored a little bit less defensively. I don't know if he's hustling as much, but he's still keeping it like 25, 7, and 7 a game. And I think that he still has gas left in the tank. I think that he's an all-star caliber player for sure. So then we have Austin Reeves. And as much as I would like to leave Austin Reeves off this list, we do have to recognize the jumps that he's made, came into the league as a rookie, and, you know, you had that meme with him and LeBron, where he's taking directions, he had that, uh, you know, really clutch shot, and that brought him into fame, he had the hellbilly copy reputation, here too, he was nearly a 50-40-90 player, um, and then, expectations are high, he steps into a little bit of an expanded role in year three, and his scoring does go up, his efficiency down a bit, maybe not as good as what people were hoping for, but he has, like, improved at least in some way in each of his last three years, and if he keeps doing it, if he can have that efficiency and that scoring, I don't want to rule it out. I know that it is probably just a lot of my roommates, Laker fan bias, he's 
always said, like, Austin Reeves, All-Star in his future, and I don't really think it's going to happen, but if he can take another step forward, like, he's averaging, what, 16 points a game? If he can average 18 points a game this year on, like, 50, 40, 90 efficiency, how could we say that it's never going to happen in his, in his career? Maybe he maxes out as a solid role player, but I don't know. I don't know him like that. Uh, and then we have D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell made one when he was on the Nets, but the Nets was really like a good vibes team. I don't think D'Lo ever sees another one. Uh, he played pretty well when those trade rumors were happening last year, but once again, the West is way too stacked. There are too many guards that are already better than him that don't make it. Uh, unless he gets traded to some team in the East and has a career year, I don't see D'Lo ever making another All-Star game. Then, moving into the Memphis Grizzlies, we actually have five guys from the Memphis Grizzlies that I want to talk about. Uh, John Morant, Desmond Bain, Marcus Smart, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Gigi Jackson. So first up, John Morant. Don't forget, guys, John Morant is an All-Star for sure. I don't know if any of you really forgot, but we didn't get to see a lot of him last year. And in the games that he played, looked like an all-star. Whenever he's been on the court, he has looked very good. Uh, all-star, for sure. If he's able to be healthy, and really health has not been a concern that much. Except for that one time he tweaked his knee in the playoffs, and uh, now with his ACL. So hopefully he's suited up and ready to go for next year. Uh, and hopefully no off-court shenanigans. But, yeah, if he is on the court and playing, he has an all-star. And now Desmond Bain. Call me crazy, but I think that Desmond Bain could maybe scratch one one year. Uh, I don't know if it's on the Grizzlies. like the volume that he shoots and the way that he shoots it really just depends on what the team and situation is if he was in a say he's not in the west or say say the Grizzlies are the two the one seed say that the Memphis Grizzlies are the one seed next year I think that Desmond Bain is their best second best player and I think if Jaw is feeding him catch and shoot shots and he's making it good enough and he's at least solid on the defensive side I could see him maybe making it I'm going to put him in maybe one day I I feel like it could happen maybe not in the west but I don't know I, I, I feel like it's possible and then Marcus Smart He's been in the league for a long time, always been very good, never quite all-star worthy, even though he was defensive player of the year. Uh, he is just a solid role player, and I think the same goes for Jaron Jackson Jr., talented big defensive player of the year, uh, gets a lot of blocks, but no more than just a solid role player. I don't think that he's getting an all-star nomination. And Gigi Jackson, yeah. Uh, great first year. Uh, a lot more minutes than you'll probably see going forward, but he did earn his spot on the roster. Uh, made that all-rookie second team, and I would like to see how he can develop. Way too early to tell, but I liked what I saw from Gigi Jackson, and I think that he did pretty well um, starting the second half of the year. I guess his development was notable. Then we move into the Minnesota Timberwolves where we've got Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Downs, Rudy Gobert, uh, Mike Conley, and Nas Reed. Anthony Edwards, straight into the All-Star caliber list. No question about it, he made it this past year. He's going to make it for many years to come, I believe. Um, just a great young talent in this league, and I'm excited to see what he has. Carl Anthony Downs, I have to say he is an All-Star caliber big. Like, best, best shooting big in the league. Um, 
yeah, he is probably like that Julius Randall kind of guy where he's going to be in that all-NBA kind of conversation or at least in the all-star conversation. I do think that just his skill set and what he does for the position that he plays, it's too hard to ignore. Um, and yeah, I think that he's all-star caliber. Rudy Gobert, Rudy Gobert is a fringe all-star. It depends on the record of his team and their defensive rating. If those two things are going well for him, he'll make it. Um, because his defensive impact is definitely there, but when your team is not among the top four. Any other part of Rudy Gobert's game is just too ugly to make the all game, so yeah, it really just depends on that. Mike Conley, Mike Conley is uh, past his prime, and honestly, Mike Conley has one All-Star nomination, that's why I included him on this list. His best days were on the Grizzlies. He did not deserve that Utah Jazz All-Star bid. That was totally just a legacy type of thing. He had never made it before. The Jazz were doing pretty well, and they were like, why not? Why not reward him? There were other players that were more deserving for sure. And, yeah. My comment, though, like, yeah, right now in his career, probably underrated. Probably doesn't have that many years left. Um, but if we're talking about the Utah Jazz, Mike Conley making the All-Star game, I don't think he deserved it. I don't think that he makes another one for sure. And then Nas Reed, fan favorite, great skilled big man, uh, shooter. He's just a solid role player. I Six man of the year, um, doesn't look like he would start anytime soon, and I think that he's going to contribute major points off the bench. He's going to be one of the best shooting bigs, but that's about it. Then, after that we've got the New Orleans Pelicans, starting off with Zion Williamson. It's really just a health thing when Zion is on the floor. Dominant guy, definitely an all-star, but he has just missed so much time in his first couple years that we have to put him at fringe. If he could be more healthy, we could definitely give him, like, for sure all-star status, but he can't. He's just not healthy, and yeah, it's a shame. Then Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram, I think, is a fringe all-star. Um, it's not for sure one, but he definitely plays well enough that he can make it, and it just depends on the health of the other guys. Um, I'm trying to think. I feel like he did make it one of these last two years. And, yeah, one of the best fadeaway shooters. Um, mid-range, mid-range game is elite, and yeah, he is definitely the best option when Zion is not there, second best when Zion is there, just depends on how healthy the rest of the league is, but B.I. Yeah, is pretty solid. Then we've got DeJounte Murray, DeJounte Murray made it that one year on the Spurs, um, He's pretty skilled, both sides. Gets you assists, uh, plays solid on defense. I think he was like steals later that year. Made the All-Star game convincingly. And maybe in this situation he can be propelled back in there. I am willing to put DeJounte Murray in the fringe All-Star category. He's done it once. If the Pelicans somehow manage to stay healthy, he could maybe have another career year. Maybe he could make another one, even though the West is stacked on guards, uh, because he's a two-way player, so we'll see. He does have a lot of talented guys to assist the ball, too. I don't think that him and Trey, like, they're both guards, and neither of them is, like, truly just catch and shoot, but, like, the law of threat is real in New Orleans, so we'll see, we'll see. Then we've got C.J. McCollum. C.J. McCollum is never going to make one. He is like Mike Conley of our current NBA players. Uh, he's a solid role player. We'll 
was the, the three third option now he falls to the fourth option had many good years in Portland but he is going to end his career without a single all-star bid unless they for some reason give him an undeserving one like they did Mike Conley but I really hope that is not the case then we move into the Oklahoma City Thunder ah uh, this is the number one seed from last year led by Shea Coaches Alexander then we also have Jet Holmgren and we've got J-Dub Jalen Williams Shea Claire All-Star uh, nothing more to be said honestly should have won the MVP last year if we talk about it you know just with the talent group that he had with the Thunder to finish as the number one seed for him to be scoring that much and you know he, he does impact the, the game on both sides I think that it wasn't truly. I agree with Jack. I do think that Shea Gilchus Alexander was last year's MVP. And it's a shame that it went to Jokic again. Then, after that, we have Jed Holmgren. Uh, Jack, Jed is all star potential for sure. Um, his, his year one was very nice. If you can build on that, like they've already finished as a one seed, the league has been put on notice. If they move him to the four and he can be even more productive than he was, he can definitely make an all-star game. I don't want to say he's fringe all-star yet, but I think him and Jalen Williams both believe belong in this all-star potential list. Jalen Williams, one of the best fourth, board, fourth quarter performers last year. Um, also, a guy who was like unbelievable in his rookie year and made a good leap in his second year we have to see what the ceiling is for him I think that both of these guys could be all-stars at some time in their future then we move into the Phoenix Suns the Phoenix Suns is led by Kevin Durant he is an all-star yeah unless he gets injured like his game looks just as masterful as it is always he's really bounced back from those injuries uh that one injury beautiful way like did not lose a step looks just as good as he ever has definitely an all-star and Devin Booker yeah top four shooting guard in the game rank him however you want in that top four he's definitely an all-star um yeah no question about it Bradley Beal Bradley Beal is past his prime I do not think that Bradley Beal touches another all-star game in his career. Uh, that Washington Wizards trade, you know, on the Wizards, he was his fool's gold with the Wizards scoring 30 points, more than 30 points for a couple seasons. Uh, very solid when he was in the lineup, but there was truly nothing being done. He was making waves in a, you know, hot tub. Like, there was nothing that he was really doing. Um, and now we've seen him this trio doesn't really look like it's going to work he wasn't even all that healthy and health has been a little bit of a concern with him these last couple years I think that he's kind of washed I don't even I don't even know if he can like he didn't even score 20 points a game last year uh, Bradley Beal is done for then we've got Jeremy Grant Jeremy Grant is a solid role player that make it that one year in Detroit and so I'm going to throw him in that unlikely to happen again if he is in the right system if he actually Detroit he was balling out on a bad team he's still on a bad team with the Blazers they signed him to a long contract if he stays healthy and he really dominates maybe I think it's unlikely to happen again but he's still on the younger side he could he could uh, I'm not going to demote him to anything further than this I think that it's unlikely but hey maybe maybe he does something now we get to the Sacramento Kings uh, oh by the way that was the Portland Trail Blazers on the entry with the Sacramento Kings we've got De'Aaron Fox DeMontis Sabonis uh, DeMar DeRozan and Keegan Murray Aaron Fox is an all-star starting guard. Um, no, not starting. 
he is an all-star level guard, whether he makes it or not. It's just because of the talent level, he is at least one of the faces of the Kings. He is incredibly fast. I think that he's talented, very clutch. Uh, dude, there are just times in the game where, like, he pulls up and he does not miss. I think that he is an all-star level guard. It's just hard for him to make it. And, and there's nothing really that fringe about it. It's just, it's it's rough for him with the competition. But he is an all-star level guard. So bonus, honestly, it is the exact same. Um, Sabonis is a double-double machine, one of the best passing big men in the league. Doesn't score as much as some of the other big guys, but gets a lot of rebounds and is a pretty adequate passer. And if we're talking about it, he should be an all-star. He really should be. I think people are going to learn from this past year. They're going to get him that bit this year. I don't know who falls out of it, but... Sabonis is an all-star level guy. And DeRozan. It's hard to say with this role this year. DeRozan, when he was in Toronto, clear all-star. When he was on the Spurs, he kind of fell off a little bit. Uh, and then back in Chicago, he was playing very well. Uh, last year played very well. Year before played very well. Clutch player of the year candidate has the ability to go score like 25-ish a game. We have to see how he fits into the system here because it is new and he is on the older side. I'm going to put him in the fringe. In the East, I think that I would still have him as all-star caliber, but just with the team switch being as late into the career as it is, uh, like, I wouldn't be surprised if he made the All-Star team. I just don't know if he'll, if it'll happen. And then we've got Keegan Murray. Um, Keegan Murray, very solid rookie year. And then showed that he was way too good to be in Summer League. His name was involved in a lot of Baskov's Siakam trade rumors. Ultimately, they opted to keep him. Can go out, can not... I think that I would like to put him in the maybe one day category. It's early in his career, but I don't think it's too early to tell. I think that Keegan Murray showed in that one game he could break that three point record. Like, he got really hot and he almost broke it. Um, and that's in year two of his career. If he can be a starting piece, he's one of the few defenders, really. Like, They'll play him because of his defense. His shooting is very nice as well. I wouldn't be surprised if Keegan Murray could someday make an all-star game. I think it's possible. Then, Victor Wamanyama of the Spurs and Devin Vassell of the Spurs and Chris Paul. These are three San Antonio Spurs representatives. Wami is an all-star. I don't think there's any doubt about it. I think that he's for sure making it this year. He had amazing rookie campaign. He gets Chris Paul for his development. I think that he plays even better. Um, a lot of people thought he should have been defensive player of the year. Just there's too much hype around the guy. I think he makes it for sure. The all-star fan voting, it will be through the roof for him. He is going to make Devin Vassell. Devin Vassell is going in that maybe one day category. Talented younger guy. I think that he is really the beast that they are going to try and develop with Wemby. If these two guys can find success among one another early on, they will, you know, attract a lot of attention. I think that he is a promising young talent. Kelvin Johnson, not as much anymore. So Jen, I didn't like what I saw from him. Vaso is pretty good, and I think that one day would happen. I think that he belongs among his peers in this category. And then Chris Paul, fastest prime, you know, decorated NBA legend, point guard, but he's 39. Even if he, I mean, like, when was the last time he made it? It was a few years ago. If he's 
somehow gets like 15 assists a game next to Wemby. Maybe he gets thrown into the All-Star game, but I don't think that's going to happen. And then we have the Utah Jazz left. Um, just three guys from this team. We've got Laurie Markkinen, Keontae George, and Walker Kessler. Starting off with Laurie Markkinen, I think that he goes in the fringe all-star category. He's already made one uh, two years ago. He is a sniper at seven foot, you know, tall guy. Plays well. Um, one of the highest three-point shooter, volume three-point shooter guys in the league. I think he could make another one very well. He's young, he's talented. It's for surely possible that Lori Markkinen makes another All-Star game in his future. Just when and where. Then, Blair Bull. Uh, we've got Keontae George of the Utah Jazz. Keontae George, I think, had a very nice rookie year. Uh, you know, I think he led all rookies in assists. And he can score the ball. Right now in Summer League, he's like dropping 30 points a game. Um, yeah, a lot of that is off of free throws, but if you can drive to the basket and get fouled, then, you know, Embiid does it, Luka does it, Shea does it. It's part of the game. Um, Deontay George, too early to tell, but could, could definitely see him maybe, maybe in the future doing it. And then, Walker Kessler, honestly, just based on the fact that Rudy Gobert exists as a player and how well Walker Kessler was able to emulate Rudy Gobert in year one, I have to say that he goes on this list. I could have left him off completely. It's still too early to tell, but if he makes a jump, like his rookie year was better than this past year, if he can play slightly better than his rookie year with his physique, uh, and the number of blocks and his impact on defense. He could be like a, a Rudy Gobert. I think that is a sailing a Rudy Gobert type of dude. It's not as good for sure right now, but year one when Gobert wasn't really doing that well with the Timberwolves and Kessler in year one looked pretty good. Um, that comparison wasn't that far off. And so if he can get back in that conversation of being compared to Rudy Gobert, yeah, we'll see, maybe. But right now it's too early to tell him. Just two years into his career, he didn't play enough. We can't really say anything. But yeah, we have officially concluded the West. Now we can count up our players and see what our total is. So as we recall, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We've got 16 all-star caliber players. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and eight fringe all-stars. So 16 plus eight brings us to 24. And if we remember from the East, we had 20 in our combined total of all-star caliber players in fringe all-star calibers. So what this means is, yes, the West is more talented. We have four more guys floating around the all-star game that will not make it, um, there's just a discrepancy before, it, it depends how you want to look at it, it could be a lot, it could be not a lot, I don't think it is as big as people are claiming, we have to see how this free agency period really finalizes, uh, if any of these guys are getting moved to the other, uh, just taking a look at all of the dudes on this list, for the West, realistically, the only one I could see somehow ending up on an Eastern team is Brandon Ingram. So say we lose him, that is a maximum of 23. Uh, let's, let's go back to our East and see how many people could end up in the West. So we've got all of these guys, of uh, any of them, how many are ending up in the West, and I think Zach 
Levine maybe uh, I don't know where he would go but Zach Levine and the Bulls I think that their tenure is done I think that he gets moved I don't know who wants him or who would get him the Kings don't want him anymore for sure I don't think that the Warriors wanted him or will get him maybe he ends up on a West team maybe he ends up on an East it's hard to say and then anyone on this category honestly if someone really pushes for Jimmy maybe uh, but I don't think so I think that the Heat know better than to give Jimmy up uh, though there is like a little bit of tension I feel like they gave Bam that contract they haven't given Jimmy his contract there were talks of Jimmy like leaving the Heat or like getting shipped out somewhere else I don't know what his like status is with Pat Riley or the organization if he wants out, if he wants in, what is really going on. But between Zach Levine and Jimmy Butler, let's say that combines into one guy, maybe one of these guys ends up in the other conference, so we get dropped from 20 to 19. Um, but if these guys really trade places with their counterpart, yeah, you still end up with 20 and 24. So, yeah, I guess that concludes our experiment. Yes. West is more talented, and the West is more Consider talented. There are and fifteen teams in each conference. Are we do have fifteen teams in each conference? Caliber type. We do have four. I don't think that our caliber type is unnatural. I don't think that it's but that unnatural. But it is an advantage. The West is more stacked. It is an. Advantage. I don't think it's that the West unfair. is more stacked. But I don't think it's that unfair.
episode of Dykes. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.